Coming up on the Unleash podcast, it's been a great January so far with Enrichment Daycare. We'll show and tell you all about how we've been making things great for our dogs this month at Unleashed. Plus, Joe Zuccarello from Paragon Pet School will join us to talk about grooming tips, how you get your dog prepared, how you make the experience better for you and your dog when you get your dog groomed. And shed season is just around the corner. It's coming up. We're going to show you how we make sure that your dog's hair ends up on our floor at Unleashed instead of your floor at home. I'm Ben Larson, the host of the Unleashed podcast. Great thanks for joining us again here this week. It's been a, a good January. You know, we had the little cold snap. It was really cold. Uh, we got through it. <laughs> we, we did a, a good job with the dogs uh, trying to shuffle them inside and outside. We've become pretty good at it by this point. And every year, and of course, winter's not over yet, but every year we're guaranteed at least one brutally cold snap. This one was quite something. Uh, if you lived through it here in Wisconsin with us, it was very, very cold. Uh, but we made sure all the dogs were safe, healthy, happy. Uh, we got them outside for a little bit. We brought them inside. We had some indoor play areas. We had our covered play area up and running with the heater going. Uh, so all in all, a good week. And now, again, it's back to like spring-like weather here in late January. So we continue to ride the roller coaster. It's uh, I'm sure it'll continue through the winter. All that snow we got is practically gone here by the weekend. It's uh, It's pretty crazy, but we'll see how the rest of the winter plays out. Still a long way to go before before spring hits and we have all that spring and summer fun uh, here at Unleashed. So we've been getting through it. It's been good. We launched Enrichment Daycare, our Daycare 2.0 program. You've probably heard about it, but it was fantastic. And that brings us to our faux sponsor uh, for the podcast here, and it's peanut butter. Why peanut butter? Well, last week we had National Peanut Butter Day, and uh, we offered a discount on our Frozen Kongs and our wonderful customers, pet parents, uh, indulged us and, and so did the dogs the dogs love the peanut butter you can see max and chase here uh chowing down a little bit and in fact uh we have a little bit of chase there to show you uh and this is what's great about the frozen kong uh peanut butter frozen kong uh, th this will occupy your dog for you know a solid maybe five to ten minutes maybe even 15 kind of depending on how long you, your dog takes and chase is kind of looking at me like uh what's that thing in my face here's a, a little video of Morgan uh, taking after the Kong. A lot of work, a lot of stimulation, a lot of mental capacity trying to reach in there, get the peanut butter, reach in, get a couple of treats as well. So uh, a lot of fun with the dogs working through uh, in, in with those treats every day. And we, we give frozen Kong treats out every day during a break in daycare at Unleashed. And you can always come for daycare and you can add on the frozen Kong for $5. Uh, and they get a nice little treat while they're in and resting uh, during their daycare days. So uh, National Peanut Butter Day, we went through a lot of peanut butter. We always go through a lot of peanut butter at Unleashed, and it's well worth it. We also offer pumpkin Kongs if dogs don't do well with peanut butter or just a little change of pace, frozen pumpkin or frozen applesauce Kongs. So we've got a lot of treats up our sleeve at Unleashed for uh, your your pets and your dogs because it's, uh, well, I mean, you want to give dogs treats, right? That's some of the best, uh, most fun you can have with a dog is watching them enjoy a treat and go nuts for the treats. We also had on uh, Friday, I, I kind of made this up, but maybe I didn't. I don't know. You know you know how there's so many national days. National days are everywhere. It's National Pajama Day. It's National whatever, right? Wallpaper Day. I mean, it's just uh, every day. I don't even know how you get on a list. Maybe perhaps my life's goal should be to proclaim a national day of something. Now, I don't know what I would proclaim, but I'll work on that. Uh, point is, national days are all over the place. And so we'll just say that Friday last week was National Treadmill Day. And into that spirit, we uh, we got going with the slap mill uh, at Unleashed. Now, we, we've had it up for a while, but this is such a great enrichment as well. And one of our many enrichments uh, that we have as part of our enrichment daycare program, as you can see here, this is Max, one of our uh, employees' dogs, uh, Mackenzie. And he's on there. He loves this thing. Uh, just go, go, go with the uh, with the slap mill. He gets up, and it can be just a fantastic, you know, workout. It's it's giving your dog a walk inside, provide some stimulation. You see Morgan here. This is Morgan learning the uh, slap mill. So it's pretty cool. 
kind of a behind the scenes view of how she's kind of okay. I'm, what is this thing? And and here's Revan uh, doing the same thing, uh, trying to learn and and figure out you know how we do this. But after a while, after a couple sessions, uh, they really get cranking with it, and it is a lot of fun with the slap mill. Uh, and some dogs don't take to it at all and that's okay but some dogs absolutely love it a lot of dogs are of course cautious it's a brand new experience and then by uh second or third session they're raring to go they hop right on and they're like let's work it out it's like it's like if you had the motivation uh to work out the way some of the dogs do uh well you'd be in much better shape i include myself in that uh, i don't have a treadmill because i'm not going to use a treadmill but we have one for dogs it's a slat mill and again it's self-powered so it's not there's not a lot of danger in, in the sense that uh, there's a, a motor running and, a, a, you know, the belt running and a dog might freak out and all of a sudden you've got a situation where they can't keep their feet and they're sliding all over. No, this is a self-powered thing. So if the dog stops, the slap mill stops and everything's okay. And of course, it's always supervised, by, pre-supervised, I should say, by one of our handlers at Unleashed and just a great way for exercise and for simulation because, again, it's this... This new experience, uh, which is what enrichment is all about at Unleashed. It's about the new experiences. It's about figuring out and, and building confidence and also that mental stimulation. If you've had uh, a chance to listen to or watch some of our previous podcasts, you'll know that like Allison Jacobs and Kristen Paris of uh, Scouts Honor or Chad Fahey of Charlie's talk about how the mental stimulation, the enrichment is at least the same amount of, of exercise uh, and, and energy spent for a dog that the physical play is. And so for so many dogs, if you, if you look at our enrichment daycare and what we're trying to do with it, so many dogs need that stimulation. They get a little tired of playing in a group with, you know, 14 other dogs. It's kind of like akin to if you are a person, you know, if you go out at night, would you want to spend eight to 10 hours with the same 14 people? Probably not. You know, if that paint your, pretend that's a situation, even if it's a bunch of different people, you're going to get tired. You're going to want to do other things and take breaks and maybe do other engaging activities throughout the day. Uh, and that's what we have found with a lot of dogs. So there's nothing wrong with your dog at all if they can't go eight hours of nonstop play, for crying out loud, right? That's uh, just like humans. Like, like I like to say, we're all mammals here, right? Uh, just like other humans, they don't want to do that. Uh, they want to find a variety of different things to do to enrich and stimulate. And that's what this is all about. Uh, we are, we've changed our model of daycare at Unleashed. Even in the group plays, you can see here, our structured daycare is no longer just we throw the dogs out in the play yard and they just, you know, whatever all day. Now we're doing some events. We're doing bubbles and group sits and uh, we're doing gate manners and some uh, group agility activities. So we're, we're breaking their day up with some structured activities to get through the day. But if you have a lot of dogs that don't like to be in group all day, hybrid daycare is the option right? Where they have a half day of group and then a half day of a couple of uh, enrichment events that they can, again, get that mental stimulation. They take a break, they get the mental stimulation a couple times. And then by the end of the day, they're less stressed and they're just as tired from a, a day of play and a day of adventure. And they're ready to come home and, and uh, you know, have a good time at home or relax at home and then, and then be a little less stressed uh, in their home environment as well. And obviously we have a lot of dogs, big category here, a lot of dogs who just cannot have group play. Maybe they can later. Maybe they're not altered yet. We are cut off as eight months, and then until they get spayed or neutered, we can't have them in group just for the safety of everybody. Maybe they're just never going to be able to be with other dogs. There's a lot of dogs like that. Nothing wrong with them. They just don't want to be in a group with other dogs, and it's a risk. It's a risk to them. It's a risk to the group because they might react and they might uh, you know, cause a fight, whatever, right? We can accommodate that now at Unleashed. That's so exciting. I'm just so excited about the fact that we can accommodate all of those dogs that previously we'd have to turn away from daycare. And there are a lot of dogs all around the area, all around the world, as a matter of fact, who get turned away from daycares and their owners go, I don't have an option. My dog's going to sit home all day. I have to, on a day when I'm really busy and I can't, you know, can't get to the dog to the dog park, or maybe it's 50 below zero as we just experienced. And I don't want to be outside. Uh, even if it's for 10 minutes at the dog park with my dog, cause I'm going to freeze my, uh, took us off just like my dog is. We have a, a solution here. It's called solo daycare where, we are able to spend different enrichment sessions throughout the day with your dog. And so just a super exciting daycare model that we have at Unleashed. And again, remember the activities. We've been through it, but just in case you need a refresh, you can always check out our website as well to, to look at this stuff. We have agility equipment, a whole agility course that we use. Uh, the slap mill, which you just saw, ball pit, great snow sniffing, you know, tentative, uh, really trying to to, sketch, or to find and search out the treats in the pit of balls, 
uh, it's it's a lot of fun to watch, and the dogs get a lot out of that as well. Snuffle mat, same kind of thing. Puzzle, same kind of thing. Using your mental abilities to to sniff and to find. Again, hugely stimulating and tiresome work for the dogs in such a good way. Scavenger hunt, same thing. So we have all these that are really stimulating. And then the old-fashioned walk and fetch. We have three acres of green space. Well, I guess it's white space right now at Unleashed, but we can walk your dog around get all the smells in the different areas, tall grass, the woods. We have short grass. We have concrete to walk over. We have some dirt, not to get them dirty, but just to walk over and experience that. So a lot of different experiences around our property at Unleashed to, to have a, a nature walk and an enrichment event like that. And of course, fetch. I just had somebody I talked to this morning, the dog just obsessed with fetch. And if she can get somebody just play the fetch with her dog a couple times a day for half hour, boom. Well, here we are. We can do that at Unleashed, so it's pretty cool. And again, just contact us, reach out. If you have any questions, you can check all this out on our website. We have videos. We have the ability to chat with you. We have the ability for you to call or chat in our chat box, email, answer questions. We want to answer your questions. We want to take care of your dog, of course, with our new enrichment program here at Unleashed. Joe Zuccarello from Paragon Pet Grooming School is set to join us. He's going to talk all about grooming tips. Uh, so important, right? Because uh, so many dogs, of course, need to be groomed. A lot of times it's for their own safety. If you get a, a doodle or a longer coated dog, you're, you're running the risk if you don't groom your dog regularly of having mats. Uh, clearly, we know how nice it is to have a freshly bathed dog. Everybody knows that nice smell as opposed to the smells that can occur if a dog isn't nicely bathed. So how often should you do it? How often should you be have your dog groomed? What what are some things you can do at home to help the experience and help in between grooms? What about do it yourself? What does that look like for you? And, and what are the best tips there? Joe's going to get into all that with us, which is awesome. I uh, really appreciate it. In fact, Joe helped us design and build our grooming facility at Unleashed. Uh, before, when, when we bought Unleashed uh, and turned it into Unleashed for the first uh, year or two, I don't even know how long, two years, it was like a grooming closet is what we had. We had just a very small little room uh, that was being used for multiple things, including grooming. We had to make some serious changes. We did. Could not be happier with the results. Two awesome stainless steel, forever stainless tubs, two grooming stations where you can pull curtains around and have privacy, a drying area, uh, more than double the space. I mean, it's just a, a fantastic uh, renovation that we've made at Unleashed, and we're set and open for business, uh, particularly with baths. And I want to point this out. I have a little uh, more video here if you're watching the podcast of uh, what it looks like when I said early to open the show, how we make sure that your dog's hair ends up on our floor rather than yours. Uh, this is uh, Kenzie again, uh, one of our, our groom techs going through. And this is before a bath, before the very first thing that Jasper here, uh, who's a, a Pyrenees mix, before, before Jasper even gets wet. Uh, with anything. This is what we're doing because Jasper had a shed control treatment, which is uh, one of our big services at Unleashed, shed control, where you're going to be able to get all the hair and fur out of your pet that we can possibly get out you know, when your pet visits. So, so much of what would otherwise end up on your floor, on your socks, on your clothes, on your couch, under your sofa, dust bunnies in the corner, in your carpet like crazy, we can get it out here at Unleashed. I mean, look at this. Is I, I was just filming this and the hair is just kind of flowing in front of the camera here. It shoots up all around and all around the room. And this is what you get uh, when you have shed control. So just take a look at what's happening here. And I can actually probably give it a little uh, volume here. See what that's doing. <laughs> But yeah, that that is uh, what it looks like, and you can see the sort of the the fur. If you look at Kenzie, she's got a a white coat on her shirt right now. You can see the hair clumps coming out, and you know, big dog Jasper. So he takes some time to really blow this out. Then we go through and we uh, do the shampoo and the conditioner with the special shed control treatment, and then we do uh, we dry uh, Jasper off, and then we brush Jasper out. So we take not only time to blow as much fur out as we can to start. But then we're going to dry, or we're going to dry, and then we're going to brush Jasper out. So it's just so much to do to take care of a dog, which is awesome. Let us do that work for you instead of you having to to try and do this at home. Uh, first of all, do you have this equipment at home? Probably not. You know the 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 uh, blower and the tub and the space and the room to get hair all over the place. Probably not, right? So let us do that for you at Unleashed, uh, and then and then you know you can send a dog home. You do this every. 
uh, six to eight weeks, somewhere in there, you get, you fall into a rhythm with it. You you're going to notice that there's so much less fur <laughs> on your floor at home, and you can take that pain out of uh, you you know having your dog because it it is you know you you know how it goes when you you vacuum. We we experience it. We have two goldens here, and I, whenever I run over the floor and vacuum, it's like whoa. And you know we're doing this with them. Well, we aren't doing this enough. Uh, I should be doing this more with them in terms of the the blowout here and the shed control. So note to self. Uh, but anyway, we're going to talk with uh, Joe Zuccarello. So he'll join us next. Talk all about the grooming tips. And happy to to have Joe join the program next right here on the Unleashed Podcast. We are thrilled to be joined on the Unleashed Podcast by Joe Zuccarello, who has uh, played a, a big help in our uh, operation here at Unleashed over the the course of the last year plus now. Joe, I guess we've been talking. Gosh, we first talked uh, in Orlando at a at a conference, and then I uh, solicited your help when you were amazing for us to redesign our grooming operation at Unleashed. Uh, and it's been it's been great. Our grooming uh, facility went from a closet to a whole big room with uh, multiple stations and everything. So it's really been awesome. And I wanted to just have you start. Uh, you you teach grooming now to uh, to everybody through Paragon uh, Pet School. It's, uh, ParagonPetSchool.com is the website, uh, and you you instruct groomers, including one of ours. Uh, and it's just a fabulous thing. But you got your start uh, actually doing it, kind of being in on it, uh, and and you know really running a big shop didn't you and having people come through so there's uh there's a little bit of experience behind behind what you're doing yeah <clears throat> well first off thanks for having me ben i appreciate it yeah. great to be part of the unleashed podcast um you know yeah so i started my career uh at the time of this podcast recording which is uh, what december of 2023 yeah. uh come this coming february i will have i will start my 39th year in the pet industry and uh wow. i mean i started as a teenage dog bather on saturdays right just a part-time <laughs> gig for cash and i was wet all day i smelled all day i was hairy all day i was hot all day and i couldn't even drive so the owner of the shop would drive me to work and then and then uh, uh, pick me up from my home, drive me to work. We lived in the same subdivision and then drive me home at the end of a Saturday. <laughs> right? So I was like an employee hostage, you know? Uh, yeah. But I remember, man, I was living, I was living high dog. I had, I had $30 cash every Saturday. I was 13 <laughs> years old and I just thought I was, you know, King Puba. But um, yeah, yeah, so, you know, I, I, I spent uh, the first 22 years of my uh, career in the full service pet care facilities uh, yeah, we had, I had 60 dog groomers that worked for me. We did a hundred thousand grooming appointments a year. We could board about 600 dogs a night, had about 200 dogs a day in doggy daycare, 22 dog trainers. I mean, it was quite the operation. Yeah. Yeah. So I learned That's a insane. lot about yeah. that in the first couple of decades of my career about the, uh, the pet care services business, including grooming, which you referenced earlier. Yeah, and obviously, you know, you you kind of seen it all, and uh, you know, we have two here at Unleashed. Uh, I think uh, our our groomer Amy is uh, twenty years of experience herself, and so we've we've seen a lot of crazy things come in. The emergency calls about my dog got into it with a you know X Y and Z, either rolled in poop or a skunk, or you know the dog that's matted from. I've had that happen, right? So, what was that? The porcupine. I've had that oh, happen where dog I've... comes in, got wow. quills all in its face. Yeah. Oh, haven't had that. Only seen that in movies, but <laughs> but that's crazy. So let let's just start with this. You know, let's say that you know I just have a, a typical you know golden retriever or uh, lab. I guess those are two different things because you're not usually cutting labs hair. But if you know if you're if you have a dog like a golden retriever or a longer haired dog that gets full grooms that needs haircuts and trims, what is the general rule of thumb? Let's say you're just starting out with a puppy. Uh, how often should should be getting that dog groomed? You know, one of the greatest part about professional groomers is that typically your professional groomer is going to have their hands on that dog even much more frequently even than the pet's veterinarian, right? Mm -hmm. So the pet goes and sees its vet once a year, maybe unless something happens. But traditionally, when during your healthiest of years, once a year, well, the groomer is going to see that dog a lot more than just once a year. So typically on a on a on a on a dog that that is a uh, a haircut breed a trimming breed right a dog that needs haircut that would otherwise grow out and get matted typically we recommend every four to six weeks no more really than every eight weeks depending on the breed so somewhere between that four and eight week mark um is is typically the the most recommended and so you know that's interesting because we certainly have customers that that have uh, exceeded that uh, from time to time what happens if you you go beyond eight or even, you know, sometimes past what, two, three months, what, what can happen that uh, we don't want to see? 
you know, most of the time, the very first thing that's going to happen is the dog's going to start to get tangled, right? So it's going to start to get mats. And then uh, those mats turn into knots <laughs> and then the knots yeah. turn into belts, right? Um, yep. But all along the way, a couple things are happening. The very first thing happens is that there's discomfort for that pet. Imagine if it, now, obviously I don't have very long hair, nor do you, but if you, if we had <laughs> long hair and we were going to, we were just going to start to slowly twist it. And that's what happens when mats and, and tangles happen is that we slowly start to twist the hair. Well, at a, at a certain point, it's going to start pulling on our, on our scalp, on our skin, right? Well, the same thing happens with the dog. So the very first thing that starts to happen is discomfort for the dog. But as that gets tighter and tighter, less airflow can actually get to the coat or skin, which means then what you're facing is uh, skin, skin challenges, right? Skin irritations, uh, uh, dryness or dandruff with the, with the, with the, uh, with the pet skin, uh, all the way up to and including even what we call hot spots, where sometimes that skin can get pretty angry underneath there. And then just the overall hygiene, right? Just dirt. And, 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 and other debris that needs to be removed from that coat and skin in order to provide the dog the best hygiene health. So I got to ask this, and I, maybe you have a good story. I don't know if you can conjure one up because I'm kind of putting you on the spot. But I've had a couple of people come in who gave us the old, hey, I thought I'd try to groom my dog myself at home. And, uh, oh, our groomer loves that one. Uh, so so have you had people who try to do that. And it seems to me like when people try to do that, they learn their lesson pretty quick. Well, they do. And, and, you know, and I give them, I give them a, an E for effort, right? Um, yeah. um, you know, some, I mean, you know, there's always a thing behind the thing. Why are they doing that? Maybe they're doing that to save a dollar. Maybe it's because they think they're going to enjoy it, right? We don't know what reason or the, what the thing behind the thing was. Um, but most of the time I, I would liken it to my, I, I'm not mechanically inclined at all. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't change my own oil. Listen, I would break something trying this simplest thing. It's just not my superpower, right? Well, for most pet parents without proper training, I mean, in grooming, people don't just land on this planet and become a dog groomer. They don't just land here with the skills that it, it, it takes a while, like any other trade or, or craft like plumbing you know, being a plumber or a welder or a finished carpenter or whatever. Grooming is a trade as well. So it's a skill that's learned over time and mastered over decades in some cases. Um, the pet parents, they try, they do, but for whatever reason, most do fail. Um, uh, the best we can hope for is maybe they can help, you know, maintain some cleanliness, maybe through some regular bathing at home. Um, uh, but they don't even like to do the nail trimming. I don't even like to do, I know how to do it. I don't like to do my own dog's nails, right? So, so yeah. I think, I, I think, um, they, they get a, a much greater sense of value for the pet care professional, just like they would any other expert that you would pay to have your car's maintenance done or your motorcycle's oil changed or whatever those things. Um, sometimes it's just best left up to the experts. Yeah. And, you know, look, I mean, you, you, you know that uh, not me and not you, but um, people with hair, real hair, I'm kind of deceiving you here. I, I don't have any up here. I'm just a camera <laughs> angle, right? Uh, people with real hair, uh, you know, whether it be men or women with long hair, they're not cutting their own hair by and large either, right? And that's just one t tiny little piece of the human that it's not covering the whole body that we're talking about with dogs. So, uh, yeah, I, I think most people get that, and, and a lot of people don't certainly don't want to try it, but I've just always gotten a kick out of every now and then we'll get somebody who calls up going, ah. Uh, can you help me? <laughs> it's like, oh, well, yeah. we can this we time. Remodeling shows on HGTV <laughs> right now. Help! I wrecked my house. The same yeah. thing happens. I mean, yeah. it, it, the, the, the least amount of the least trouble that can be caused if the dog doesn't look good because <laughs> yeah. it's choppy or uneven or whatever. But we've seen customers accidentally injure their pet. Right. Right. Yep. You know, and they don't want that association with their pet. So leave that. Leave. Leave the. Leave the grooming up to the grooming experts. That's right. And you can do some, in all seriousness, you, we had someone try that just not too long ago, and it was a gash that they brought the dog in and for boarding, actually. They weren't even trying to get grooming. They were just trying to, I don't know what they were really trying to do, but they tried to shave under his neck, and they cut him mm -hmm. so deep that we had to turn him back to the owner and say, you got to get this guy to the vet. He needs stitches. So it wasn't, you know, it wasn't good. Right. And it can happen. So yeah, don't try this at home. I think it's the moral of the story. And again, uh, Joe, you mentioned that the uh, pet or the grooming school. I do want to reiterate that Paragon Pet School is the website. If you're watching this and you're thinking, I'd like to try my hand at this, uh, go visit that website, uh, check it out. Uh, we, in, if we're always looking at Unleashed as well for people who can get trained on the basics. There's a pet tech 
or sorry, groom tech program that you start with, uh, that, that has the first level of training. And we are looking for people who can do that to help bathe and even do nail trims, sanitary trims, that type of stuff for dogs. You can get to know a little bit of an education and a skill set that is in huge demand, right? I mean, let's talk about that for just a minute. There, there are waiting lists in, in our local area that are weeks long, uh, months long. And I'm sure you're seeing that nationwide. This is a this is not an easy job to do. That that's another thing that goes into this. That uh, it takes a lot of learning, and then also, like you you found out when you were thirteen, a lot of work. Uh, you you do get dirty. You do get covered in in you know water and and hair all day and fur. And you got to love dogs. And fortunately, we have a lot of people that do love dogs. But that's that's again what Paragon Pet School is all about. Yeah. So Paragon Pet School, we take the people. We like to say we work with the willing, right? Yeah. So. You know, if, if you're a pet lover, you know, uh, 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 in many cases, we have a lot of people that, that that will enroll in our in our program. It's all you know, it's brought to everybody online. So the education is brought to them or with supportive employers like like uh, Unleashed. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, that are willing to actually sometimes fund somebody's beginning of their career in the pet grooming industry. I will tell you, uh, prof- being a professional pet groomer, there is no better time than right now. Uh, we have a lot of people that are career resets. Right. The people that are like, listen, I don't like my job. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. they went back to corporate America or they're doing something. And they just they just doesn't geek them anymore. Right. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of uh, career resets. We have a lot of young people that are graduating high school that they just don't know what direction in life they want to go. But they love animals, but they don't want to be a veterinarian because of maybe some of the doom and gloom of veterinary, you know, uh, of the veterinary practice. Um, they just might not be cut off for that pet grooming, professional pet grooming. An average groomer with above average customer service skills can pretty much write their own check in this industry right now. Yeah, and and the money's not we're not talking minimum wage. We're talking decent money, and uh, you know it, it is something valuable to look into. So I wanted to drop that side note as well because certainly we uh, as as we grow at Unleashed too, we're we're going to be looking for more skilled people to to help us out in that area. Um, let's talk a little bit about baths uh, because it it still is an undertaking, and I think anybody who's owned a dog say that for their entire life, uh, maybe like me, uh, even before I got into owning Unleashed, I had many experiences trying to give my dog a bath, and it is uh, it's not like just a oh I'll just take a quick shower. It's you know you're you're going to make a time commitment, and if you're in a northern climate, it's all that much harder if you're going to try and do it inside in the winter time. So again. A lot easier just to drop your dog off with a groomer uh, and, and in, a, in a grooming salon and just have it done for you and probably better, you know, and better equipment to do it with. So uh, let's talk about some basic breeds again. Just going back to the basics, Joe, how often would you say is it that same kind of time scale if you just have an average house dog or are we talking a little bit different time scale in terms of let's say you have a Labrador Retriever or, you know, any breed of dog? How often should you be getting a bath? Yeah, so non-trimming breeds, like what we talked about trimming breeds yep. earlier, the dogs whose coat continues to grow and can get tangled, bath yep. breeds need grooming hygiene as well, right? Mm-hmm. So the labs, the pugs, the, you know, some of the goldens, the chihuahuas, you know, these guys, they need they need proper uh, 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 hygiene as well. So bath hygiene. <clears throat> so, yes, you're right. If you do it at home, everybody's getting a bath. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the dog's getting a bath, yeah. the pet parent's getting a bath. I mean, in most cases, that's how it, that's how it works. Um, I, I like self washes. That's another opportunity. That's another alternative for people to, you know, if, if they really want to bathe their own dog, yep. they can take their dog. There's a variety of different self washes, you know, in most, in most communities that they're available, but I will tell you, I still believe that, that a professional grooming environment is the best place to take your pet for a, a full service bath. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, because usually uh, like an unleash, I mean, you've got the facilities, you've got the equipment, mm-hmm. you've got the staff that's trained at different levels of their grooming career in order to do the, 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 the most expert uh, job and really the best the best thing that your pet deserves. Um, you know, it's sort of an old wives tale that, you know, you can bathe it, you know, don't bathe your pet. You know, you don't bathe your pet. You'll rinse off the oils and, the, the, you know, the, the, you know, really. Yeah. If you're using Dawn dishwashing detergent as your shampoo, <laughs> maybe that, that holds true. But if you use a, a highly respected shampoo, a higher quality shampoo that you can buy either off the shelf or that I know places like Unleash has, um, mm-hmm. you take great care in your product selection. You can bathe the dog as often as you want to bathe the dog. Okay. Um, as far as a routine, yeah, set them up for a monthly bath. You know, at that point, they're also probably, you know, on a full service bath, probably getting their nails trimmed. Right. Good idea to also yeah. have them filed, maybe. So nail trimming is usually included. Ear cleaning is usually included. So think about that once a month. 
hygiene, not just a bath, but hygiene, because the groomers look, you know, the groomer groom techs, they're looking in their ears, they're cleaning them. You know, if there's an ear infection, ear mites, you know, something going wrong, they're going to find it. They're going to see it and they're going to report it to you as a pet parent. The nail trimming, that quick in the nail does not like to be at the end of the nail. So regular nail trimming almost scares that quick backwards, right? It forces that quick to move backwards in the nail. And then you have less, you know, dog tap dancing on the floor and longer nails causes a uh, 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 leg and, and foot problems as the dogs get older. So, yeah, if you have a dog that's just a, what we call a wash and wear breed, like a lab or a pug or just set them up, get them, get them in once a month. Yeah. And we do that all the time. We have people just set up their standing once a month bath uh, and, and it works out well and it's super easy because you just like any routine, like again, your own haircuts or whatever, your own, you know, insert your appointment here. You can set that up for your dog. And obviously uh, we, we certainly do that uh, at Unleashed. And I think it does benefit everybody involved. I, you know, I wanted to ask you about nail trims, nail trims, nail filings. You know, most people who do the full service bath add the nail filing with us at Unleashed, and it just makes a lot of sense because you're rounding out the edges, you're you're you know making your, the the claws not sharp. If you just clip them, you know the the snap clip. Uh, there's some risk involved in that, isn't there? Because uh, we, we've seen some dogs who just get that, and then all of a sudden they come back maybe and they have a split nail. It's, it it can be more likely to split. But tell me about. You know, what you see is the advantage to doing a nail filing versus just a, a nail trim. Yeah, so nail trims are great. Um, but most of the time, you know, even myself, when I trim a dog's nails or even my dog's nails, I'm I'm afraid of hitting that quick. Yeah. Right. So I might leave a little bit more than what I probably should on the nail trim. Right. Well, so one thing filing does is filing. Usually the professional is going to use like a rotary tool with a, a special uh, uh, bit that actually sands that down, right? So it makes the ends of the nails shorter, smoother, and rounder with the focus that, you know, the focus word there is shorter. Mm -hmm. So if we want the nails to be as short as we can get them when we get the nails done, we should always have them filed, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, but smoother and rounder, yeah, it keeps any, any, you know, snagging is kept to a minimum, tearing or breaking is kept to a minimum. Um, it's just, it's the most complete thing you can do for the nail treatment. Yeah. And it, it, it turns out to be really good. Again, we just, uh, if you get your, I think if you get your dog on a regular schedule for the nail filing, because it, it's shorter, you mentioned, and because it, you can keep that quick retracted back a little bit so you can keep them, you know, as short as can, as can go and you do it, uh, on a regular basis, uh, you, you're going to definitely see the best results. And we, we certainly have a lot of our pet parents at Unleashed that understand that. And, uh, that's why they schedule those, those nail filings regularly and you know it's uh it's good to, speaking of that is uh, you know we have a lot of people that do every six weeks i mean are you a proponent of that joe or what what time frame for that we've talked about grooming you know haircut grooming baths uh and then obviously the uh pardon me i, I had my phone glitch there uh haircuts baths and the um you know nail trims are you are you thinking every six weeks or is it does it depend on you know your own dog too and how fast the the nails will grow it's possible, you know, it's not necessarily, I mean, yes, I guess, I guess some depends on the individual dog and how fast it grows. Most of the time what we see is that dogs that have a lower amount of activity level, like, you know, uh, those dogs nails need to be trimmed more often because they're not doing it themselves. Now, of course, you know, they're not sitting there with clippers and doing it, but when you take a dog, let's say you've got a Labrador retriever and you're a runner and you go out and you take your dog running with you. Right. Your yeah. dog's going to go running with you and they're actually get their 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 nails are going to be filed down from the pavement, from the sidewalk, from the concrete. Right. Even sometimes mm -hmm. through the woods. Right. Just that activity files them down. Whereas then if you have a let's say you've got a, you know, a lazy old Shih Tzu. Right. Who doesn't really go out, do anything. You know, he's not, just a skosh better than, you know, a skosh more alive than a Build-A-Bear. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, they don't get that kind of activity, so they need they need their nails trimmed maybe even more often. You know, Ben, people ask me about frequency, and it's I could go into all of the different variables, but really for the pet parents out there, if they really want the very best for their dog as far as health and preventative maintenance, and whether it be nails, whether it be a haircut, whether it be a bath, just get them in to see the professional groomer once a month. Mm. Once a month. It's easy. Just just it, it, it's routine. There's no guesswork. Your professional groomer like Unleashed will get you set up, you know, on multiple appointments ahead of time. So you're not trying to, you know, squeeze in time. And try. Oh, my gosh. I, my dog, my dog looked terrible. 
Yeah. And then you got a two week waiting list in order to get in and see the groomer. Right. So if you just yeah. schedule it monthly, I think yeah. that's, that's the safest and really the best for everybody. Yeah. And I think that's true because it, it, to your point, it takes all the kind of the mental work out of it. You just get it on kind of routine schedule, dogs, healthy things are done. Uh, you know, you, you're, you're correct in saying we've had our groomer catch things like lumps or growths or ear infections plenty of times too. And that's super helpful, right? Because it's, it's not always like you're at home. Uh, you know, you, you get busy, you, your life gets busy. You, you don't remember to check under your dog's ears. If you have those floppy eared dogs where the infections can, can grow and all of a sudden your groomer takes a look and it's, you know, hot and red and, oh, we got to get this dog to the vet. And it has happened certainly with us as well. And I'm sure you've experienced that in your time too. And again, it's just part of that protocol. It's a, it's a healthy checkup for sure. And, and you know, Ben too, you know, I, I've had pet parents say a couple things. One is, well, first off, if, if they come in monthly, imagine if, if you could catch something after it started with only just a couple of weeks or three weeks, as many as four weeks, a lump or a bump on yourself. Mm-hmm. A mole yeah. that's sort of kind of changing color or size or whatever definition. If you could catch it in four weeks or waiting eight weeks. So if something needed yeah. attention, wouldn't you want your pet to, when you want to catch it sooner? So you just give, you give the pet the best chance of catching some things early, especially as they start to get older age, it's sort of turn, you know, senior pets. Right. Mm-hmm. But I've had pet parents say, well, I can't afford, I cannot afford, especially on the haircut dogs. Right. Yeah. I can't afford a, a full service grooming every four weeks. And I get that. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, everybody has different, you know, challenges, you know, financial challenges and priorities in their lives. But even if you had a, a trim breed, a trim dog, let's say it was a poodle. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, a Havishan, Cavapoo, Doodle, whatever. Mm-hmm. Well, schedule them every other time. Right. Every right. other month is a bath. And on the alternate months is the haircut. So yep. the bath is going to be a few dollars less on the alternate, you know, on the non haircut months, but still they get in and they get brushed. They get bathed, they get their ears clean, they get their nails trimmed and filed. So get them in for at least a bath every four weeks. And on the alternate months, every other month, they get a haircut. Yeah, that's uh, that is a great plan. And it's a good, great thing to think about if you're not only if you're cost conscious, uh, which makes total sense, but if you're also thinking, well, I just, I don't think they need a haircut every month. Uh, Yeah. Right. right? So yeah, absolutely. Give them a bath. I mean, again, as a human, you don't take two showers in two months. (laughs) I hope you don't anyway. So, you know, maybe a little different, but still not all that different. So uh, good to, good to help your dog. Yeah, exactly. Pets need it too. Yeah, no question. Uh, so, Joe, I want to ask you. I'm gonna before I let you go, we're gonna talk about uh, the the doodle topic because uh, that's uh, a whole category unto itself. And obviously, uh, doodles have uh, just exploded in popularity. What over the last? What would you say? I don't. You know better than me. Fifteen years, twenty years, whatever yeah, it's been. Certainly like the last ten to twelve years have really come. Ten to know, twelve. Really. Okay. Quickly. Yeah. And we're just now starting to see some of the doodles being seniors. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's coming, passing the doodle gene down. Uh, so, uh, they are a special category when it comes to grooming. There's no question about it because uh, some of them obviously are, are bred to not shed, but the drawback of that is then they are uh, more likely to mat and to have issues. And boy, we have seen some really bad cases of matting come in, uh, to our shop, but doodles who don't, haven't been groomed in months, maybe ever. Uh, and we've had to, we've had no choice at our place, but to shave them down to the skin and start over. And that happens for sure. Uh, so why don't you elaborate on that a little bit? Again, it, it's probably the same story. It, it's even more crucial for doodles. Is it not to just have that routine appointment? And then what do you do if your doodle is completely matted? Is there any way to avoid, you know, depending on the severity of the mats, having to shave down? Yeah. Um, doodles are, I mean, if you think about it, doodles are a very large mixed breed. I mean, ultimately, yep. Yep. right? That's the reason why we put doodle behind golden doodle, St. Saint, Saint Bernardo doodle. I mean, yeah. the doodles are a large mixed breed. But what you get in that is you get a lot of different traits, a lot of uh, uh, gene traits that dictate coat, skin condition, behavior, size, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, you know, it starts with the breeders, you know, those those folks out there that are breeding doodles, whatever the mix is, Right. And, and right. listen, many of these dogs are really great dogs. I'm, this is not a doodle slamming. This is just doodle reality, right? Yeah. So a lot of the breeders, you know, they don't, they don't quite, they don't have a history with all of those different characteristics and breed, you know, the gene, the gene studies and everything else. They're, they're taking two breeds and they're blending them. 
Mm-hmm. So you open yourself up to a variety of different challenges. Could be health challenges, could be behavior challenges, could be coat challenges, skin challenges, whatever, right? So, yeah. um, but but by and large, right? I think most of the time are the doodle breeders out there. Uh, it's unfortunate, but you know, m- maybe they come up a little bit short in some cases of really defining expectations with the pet parent who's right. about to bring that dog home and make it part of its family, um, part of their family. Um, but here's what I would encourage doodle owners to think about. Doodle, doodle pet parents need to understand that their dogs need grooming, that their dog's size, their need for grooming and their size and their personalities will carry a, a much larger price tag for grooming yeah, yeah. than the average Shih Tzu does. And that's just, that's just a reality. Um, what I tell my pet parent, uh, my pet parents out there, my clients that I work with, like, you know, like you've been at Unleashed is, is I let the pet parents decide. I give them choices. If, you know, it's all about if then. Yep. If they want their pet to have a fluffy, more full bodied coat, then we need to see that dog based on its traits, its personality, mm-hmm. its coat condition, you know, all of that, its size. We need to see that pet every X number of weeks. Let's say it's two, three, four weeks, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. If they want it to be full bodied, fluffy like that, right? But if they need to wait longer for whatever reason, mm-hmm. then they need to expect that the pet's coat is going to be put in. It's going to require probably more of a low maintenance trim. Yeah. You see, I don't like to say shave downs necessarily, but it's a low yeah. maintenance trim. It's it's it, So I let the pet parent choose. If you want them fluffy every two, three, four weeks, if, if you want to go longer, then it's going to be shorter. And I let the pet parents choose. They're always in control. That's right. Because what happens is if we as professional pet groomers who are responsible for being the experts and guiding them, we get mad when we're faced with that dog that's unruly or or its coat is so knotted and we go, oh, those darn pet parents. Well, you know, we're the experts. Yeah. My mechanic doesn't get mad at me about the way I drive. He just fixes things when they break. Yeah. Right? right. So, yeah. or I run into something, right? He's not there to lecture me on how to drive, nor can we expect our pet parents to be groomers. So Mm -hmm. when pet parent says to us, I I don't know how this happened. I brush my dog every day. Well, there's a couple of things there, right? They may be telling you the truth. They just might not be doing it really well. Right. Okay. But we can't expect them to be grooming experts. That's our job. Okay. Mm -hmm. They may be lying to us. (laughs) They may just be fibbing to us because they feel guilty about the dog's condition. It doesn't change the if then conversation now to your point let's say we're a pet care provider pet groomer out there or a pet parent we've let it go too long oh right we've let it go Mm -hmm. too long well we may not be able to save that coat this time yeah but we then go into that but if you want him to be fluffier he needs to come you see it goes right back in and if then let the pet parents choose just give them the right give them appropriate choices and help them make a decision. Yeah, and we've had that uh, conversation a lot because <laughs> it does happen. And, you know, well, most people do understand. Hey, look, uh, you know, and, and our groomer will shave off the hair and then show, take a picture of the the shaved coat and how mad it is. And, it, you know, it's it, it, it was unavoidable. Uh, but, hey, how do we handle it from here forward? You know, and, and we're always, do, we never do any of that before we have the conversation, obviously, because you don't, you can't have a, a pet parent drop off a dog expecting a trim and then all of a sudden they get a dog that looks, uh, you know, like 50 pounds lighter because that's what happens when you shave a dog. It, all that hair goes away and you're like, whoa, there was a that little dog under all that hair, right? <laughs> so that happens. Yeah, but prices are only uh, good on, during birthdays and holidays, right? So yeah, yeah. We, we never surprise our customers. Never surprise, right, no, exactly. No, yep. No. Yep. But, but so. I think a customer with the pet parents need to understand is that Sometimes it might not be communicated as well as what it could from professional groomers, mm-hmm. but really, for the most part, your professional groomer really cares about the well-being of your dog. Yeah. The well-being of your dog. If you feel like they don't care about the well-being of your dog, well, then you need to go somebody else. But I would say, mm-hmm. I am I am really happy, Ben. You've I'm sure experienced. So I'm really happy to report that a vast majority of the people who are in the professional pet grooming space really care about. Those 
Yeah, look, I mean, you're, you, you look, the, like I said before, the money is not minimum wage. It's good money that they make. But you also have to absolutely love dogs to be a, a full-time professional groomer. I mean, and, and, and that's the case with our groomer. Uh, she's always looking out and catching things, uh, and it's it's wonderful. I, I value that so much as as uh, the owner of Unleashed because I can, I can you know the customers that that pet parents that bring their dogs to us they they know that we care and that we're taking care of and that's I just love it you know I just love to see it because she she puts her hands on her dogs on the dog for what two hours at a time I and mean, think about that right you'd catch a lot of stuff if you were doing that too and and so she does and it's great um, yeah. so before I let you go then Joe and when we. <laughs> We'll have you on again in the future because there's other things to talk about. Shed control and, and you know, specialty baths. Uh, we have healthy skin and coat treatment. we got to talk about all that stuff because it's, it's really great. Um, what would you recommend in terms of, of the recommend? It's kind of like flossing now, right? How often should you floss? How often should you brush your dog out uh, is a golden question because that really can, if you do a good job, it can go a long way in helping to avoid some of the issues when you do end up at the groomer's. You know, um, I own, I own, I am a pet parent of a Shih Tzu. Remember that lazy Shih Tzu I talked about earlier? That's, <laughs> yeah, that's that, yours. That's a reference to my own dog, right? Yeah. He thinks he's a build a bear, right? Yeah. Um, and I will tell you, I mean, he gets groomed every four weeks and I'll brush him once every, once every couple weeks, okay. right? Now, again, he doesn't want to get tangled. He doesn't, but we, we keep him, you know, we keep him in a decent length. He doesn't get shaved down. He doesn't get it put in a reset trim when he's groomed. Um, but, you know, it, if, if you can brush your dogs, especially the main tangle areas, right? Like the ears, they're, they're typically left longer. The tail's typically left longer. If every couple of weeks you can at least try to run a brush or even a comb through it. But if you're not, if you're not willing to commit or not interested in committing to that, just schedule. You know, I know there's a lot of pet care professionals that will even do maintenance brushing. Yep. Like every couple of weeks you can bring in just for a brush out. Mm -hmm. Right. So yep. the, the, the pet pet grooming experts are out there to be your partner. Um, they're out there for the, to, to be your partner in a pet's hygiene needs, ask them what the options are. And a good pet care, uh, uh, you know, grooming partner will help to educate you. Um, we don't expect you as a pet parent to be a good groomer. And, and for the most part, you're probably not going to be really good at it. <laughs> I'm yeah. just saying. And that's a lot okay. of work. Yeah. And yeah, that's no. okay. <laughs> we don't expect you to be. Yeah. I didn't get my golden retrievers so I could groom them. <laughs> I got them so I could rough house with them, have fun, snuggle with them. I mean, that's what they're there for, right? You come home from a day of work and the dog's there and he's putting his head in your lap and you're just like ruffling. You know, it's great, right? And so, Unconditional. yes. Unconditional I, love. Yeah. I, yeah. And that's why I have staff to bathe them. <laughs> that's what I do. I, every few weeks, I'm like, hey, uh, can you give my guys a bath? And it's great. So, no question. You know, we do. I make, so, uh, long story short as well, I make my kids brush my dogs out. Because why not? Uh, so if you have kids, you know, you can do that. But usually, um, you know, we, we have them spend several minutes doing it uh, every so often. Uh, and, and it's it, the, the hair, almost always there's going to be a lot of hair that does come out because you're just, you're running, like we have the Furminator, you know, which is a great tool. So a lot of that hair will come out. And so there's always hair to come out. And uh, we, we'll pick that up next time, Joe. But again, <laughs> but again we have, uh, we have uh, uh, ParagonPetSchool.com is, is uh, the website for you, Joe, at, at Paragon Pet Grooming. And again, 39 years. I can't believe that. It, it doesn't look that long, judging by your look. I'm just telling you. you, I, dude, you I, look I, great. I love you more and more every time I talk to you. Ben. <laughs> You're doing great. You're doing great. You can believe that I've owned a, a pet facility for 39 years, I'm sure, but uh, it hasn't been that long. So, you know, you, you got me there. <laughs> but Joe, I appreciate it. Thanks so much. It's always great talking to you. We'll catch up again soon. Thanks again for having me, Ben. All right. All right. My thanks again to Joe Zuccarello for joining us. Uh, a great time talking with him about what it takes to make the grooming experience better for your dog. We'll have more conversations with Joe. There's a lot to get into uh, in the future. But if you ever have questions or you want to set up a grooming appointment or uh, just general questions at all uh, for Unleash for any of our services, here's a contact info again. Go to our website. A lot of information there. You can go to the chat bot and to chat with us. You can text us. You can call us. Who calls anymore? You can call us. I'm just kidding. Colin is great. Katie, who's fantastic, will answer your calls and talk to you. You can email us. You can go to our social media pages. So many ways to see what's going on at Unleashed. So check us out there uh, and enjoy it. Again, thanks to Joe. Next week, we'll have uh, Chad Fahey back on the podcast uh, to talk about uh, boarding and, and how to set your dog up better and the best way possible for boarding as we approach uh, boarding season again. I know it's only coming into February, but we're going to be uh, – we're going to be coming into it uh, as the spring and summer approaches spring break. 
then later spring, then summer, and a lot of questions, and, and we can answer them as far as what we do uh, to have your dog have a great experience and keep your dog safe and, and healthy when boarding at Unleashed. So that's coming up. Uh, thanks again to Joe. Uh, have a great week. We'll talk to you again next week right here on the Unleashed Podcast.